Okay, so... No quitting. So, I'm making a video right now. I'm going to be designing some of these templates. Like I somehow, like I showed a little bit in the last video, but this time it's going to be more in depth. So, what I'm going to be doing today is working on that, this landing gear, door covers, and everything. So, I designed them somewhat, but just like, a, there's a basic rough out, rough kind of design of everything. It's not exactly how it worked, but it's supposed to come out 3D once I make it out of paper after printing it and everything. So, before I start on anything, I have the rough just layout of how everything somewhat should look. And what I always do is copy it, because you never want to delete your original rendition of anything. And you want and you want to keep the scale also. So that's why I set it to inch guides here so I can follow that. And in real life, like as I speak, I have a ruler and I use that ruler to measure things in the real world when I need it. So first of all, let's just zoom in. So the idea is uh, once I cut out this, then I'll be able to bend it, like cut this, and this tab will go in here. And I traced it out on paper, and it worked. And then this is supposed to go inside of that. Let me show you what I mean. So we'll import a picture. So this is a picture of a plastic model somebody made. Um, yes. So you can see that there's the shape. And on the inside, there's like uh, just the patterns in here. So I'm going to make the patterns in there and also just fix the shape. Because as you can see, this one has a little tail on the edge. Whereas this one does not have any tails, just straight. So we need to fix that. So I will come over here and grab these, paste them. And be sure to keep the scale because if you drag this up or down, once you come to print it, everything's just going to be off. So. You can hold control to rotate things on a stiff axis so you can keep it vertical or horizontal. So, this would go here. This would be a finished landing gear door, but what I have to do is add that tail. And to make the tail, is always copy, because you don't want to hard design anything. So, B for the path tool. And we can go along here and add that. And this way now we have that um, little tail shape on this one. And then now we can grab our Bezier tool, Bezi, I think that's how you call it, tool and draw the rest of the shape here. And just grab S so you can pull it aside. And then I'll grab, click B again, hold control to give a straight line. And click and then for the you can just hold you just can just use it move your mouse with the bezier tool and that'll clip to the cusp nodes And to make it less bold, we can go to the Stroke dialog and change this to Pixels. That's not Pixels. It is Pixels. And reduce it just by a little bit so that when we actually print it, it's not too big. Because when you build it on paper, you don't want it to be too thick or it's just not going to look right. You're going to see like a lot of black seams on it. So, and then we can drag this, and that is the, um, that is that. And it may look wrong, but that's because when you build on the model, it's going to be flipped, so it will look right. Um, we can see that this is a little bit higher, and that is not as high, so we can hit N. 
and hold control to move this vertically downwards and hold that and that way we can bring this to a real how it is in real life and and snap that hold control to bring that and bring that in and then hit S once again go to stroke pixels and decrease that until it matches the other one and that is the um, gear door that's how the gear door should look and once we print it out I'm very confident that this will look proper in the 3d form as this one looked so it's just all about making sure that you measure everything before you make it using the inch guides on the side and everything like that so all these little renditions here we can delete them and to make sure that everything is the same we can just copy this paste it and hit V to flip it vertically and then there we have it proper landing gear doors um, it. and then we can delete these ones we can delete this one because it's not right control Z And that is the finished door thing. And since we stretched that one just a bit, we should do the same with this one. And that way it'll just fit properly inside of the when we cut when we actually go to print it out and build it. So next we can since it's the right size and everything, we can copy it, paste it here, and then all these all these patterns and shapes and this big oval cutout in the center of the wheel bay door we can just make them over here so we'll grab the rectangle tool and using this handle here we can pull it up or down to create ellipses or um, straight hard edge rectangles and triangles not triangles, rectangles and squares. So I'll grab S and make this much smaller. Not much smaller, but a bit smaller. Turn off the snapping because the snapping just makes it connect by itself to certain things and sometimes you do not want that to happen. So I'll put that right there. Look at the circle. And S will let us drag it right in there. And we can see this one's a bit lower, so we can lower it. And this element is a bit higher, and it is flush to the leading edge there. So we can rotate it and then bring it up just by hair's length to get it a little more accurate. Not touching, we don't want it touching. Right there, should be good. And then, there is a very, sort of vague seam, but this, it can be recreated in, with paper. So, to do that, I'll just copy this, copy it, paste it, and make it smaller. And that way we can drag it in here, and to make it fit inside of the big one, it will be exactly to the right shape, just a bit smaller, and that will act as the seam that we need. We can just stretch it a little there to let it touch, not touch, but almost touch the borders. And to finish it, we'll make it much thinner because we don't want it to be so prominent. Change it to pixels. 
we want it extremely thin. And then we can just delete that one. And we can see that there's a little rectangle. So first of all, I'll just draw it big. So then we can get it to the right shape. And then we can drag it to the actual size that we want it to be. And hit S, go a little smaller. And drag it to the middle. And there we have it, this door. And we can see it's a little stretch, it's a little wider than um than it is, but that's fine. So we'll copy it, paste it, flip it vertically by hitting V um, to kind of invert it, and there we have it. And we'll click Ctrl X to delete it but copy it. Paste it right near the updated rear gear doors. And there we have made a much more detailed version of that and updated it. And next, all we have to do is make sure that it will fit on the real thing, on the real airplane model. So to do that, I'll hit save to save it. And we can open the bottom wing SVG. And this is the bottom. So what we're going to do is go back to the small details, copy this, always copy, never delete, go back to the bottom wing SVG file, and paste, and flip it, and then we can see if this would have worked. But first, to test if it'll work, this is our template, so this is the middle of the belly on the F117, and I made this um, yesterday. So we can copy, copy, paste, control V, and we will take this, remember not to scale it up or down because that'll totally throw off our measurements and calculations or anything else we want to do with it. So I'll copy it again, paste it on top of that, change its stroke color to red to make it more um, easy to see. I'll just size this down until it's around the size that we need it to. And then, once it fits, right like there, and these are the actual templates that I made. So, using the scale tool, I'll line it up with the blueprint that's behind the reference picture. Or you can line the reference picture up with the hand-drawn blueprint. It doesn't matter, but... So, that's the problem. I just want to select the red pattern and not the blueprint. So, <clears throat> I'll drag it on. Sorry, this took so long. It's kind of hard to always rescale it. Oh! The thing is, you never want to rescale it. I forgot that. I totally forgot my own thing I just said. So I'll recopy this. Copy, paste, stroke, red. Then, this one, quickly delete it. Zoom out a bit, we can see things clear. And I'll move all this here. Go back to our canvas, move around the canvas using the mouse wheel. Then I will take this, and what we want to do is use is if we is if we want to scale anything we have to scale this because this represents the size of the paper model once it's done and finished done and dusted so I'll make it a little bigger and there we have it we have it lined up on our template and the blueprint and we can see some of the uh some of the elements in here are not lining up, but that's fine because um we can always rescale this to fit it um how we want it to be. So we can just make this smaller so it'll look proper and of course it's not gonna be the same because it's a little stretched out the template and when we make it in paper then it's gonna fold and then it's gonna have the right aspect ratio. But anyway, we can come back to the gear doors, copy them, paste them over here. And 
right this one this one would be that one so I'll just copy this and check does this fit and we can zoom in a bit to make sure because we want to be quite sure of what we're doing here so does this line up yes it lines up is it a little bit stretched yes it's a little bit stretched so using I'll just bring this back to a normal size Control Z turn off the snapping we'll turn off the snapping and I'll shrink that just a bit yeah that's how it's supposed to be just a little bit okay so there we have it it looks much much better and we know yes for a fact this will fit so when we make it in paper it'll fit to scale along with everything else so we can bring it here maybe do an edit here because as we can see let's grab n you can see this one it wasn't exactly correct so hold the control wheel <clears throat> lean um uh, what you call it I will grab the B and turn back on snapping and that makes it easy to quickly just snap handle to paths and cusps and all the um connective connective um easy places that are easy to connect to places so I'll hold the control key bring it down oh control Z that wasn't straight hold the control key click and then from here to here and from here to here and you can if you haven't already noticed this is quite repetitive it is quite repetitive it is repetitive by nature so having s I'll put it here again hold n and pull this up and I don't think it has to be symmetrical that little part no it doesn't it's a little bit high in fact so I'll grab this and put it here um then I'll grab that to make it straight and there we have it folks I'm really excited um maybe you're not so excited because you're not doing it but definitely try it pick some airplane pick something simple like I don't know what and try this method it's just not even a method like it's not even a method it's just like using Inkscape to make really nice detailed paper models so yeah just um there we have it so now we could tell since we actually made it we can tell that the first template we made and thought was so good actually wasn't so good after all so I'll grab S delete it and now this is the last step of um elimination of designs and we know that this for sure is the best design we have and we'll paste it here copy that one put it here flip it horizontally and there we have it that is our finished template that is what will work that is what we're going to print and as for these we can control x come over here control p for paste and then we'll zoom in a bit on our canvas select this bring it over to that one i think it's that one yeah that one um yep that works maybe i'll make it a little smaller so control Z, I'll collect all of these together and then make it all a bit smaller. And that's it. Now they're all much smaller and um, it should work really nicely. So maybe a little smaller. I'm just kind of guessing things at this point, but you can, you get that point. And um, this is not the point. This is actually what I'm going to do with these patterns. There we have it. We have the patterns. So we can come back to, sorry, not that one. We can come back to Inkscape, um, bottom wing SVG, no, no, memory document 18. <clears throat> these are wrong. We know these are wrong, so we can bring it here. And just to make things clear, we can grab that. Wrong. We know that that's a wrong one. And then we can come here. Yes. Then we'll come back to the bottom wing SVG. Copy these. It will stay to scale, as long as we do not scale ourselves. Go back to memory document. I mean, I keep getting that wrong. Small doc, small, and repaste it. And there we have it. The right patterns. It's going to fit together. Works perfectly. Voila. That's it. We've got it done and ready. Okay. So there we have it. This is that, and that, and that's what's important. How many pictures from side so we have that on the bottom view this from the side view and um uh, we have this one too but that's for the bombay doors which are these and i already did this whole process of elimination and testing and rehashing with these so this is the wing part so that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this video it was very long-winded for such a small part like this but it is actually very interesting at least i find it very interesting i do hope you too 
you, I, I do hope you find it interesting as well. If you find it interesting, let me know down in the comments. Um, because it's definitely very interesting that you can make templates in a computer without touching paper for like a good portion of it just like design your landscape using the rulers and um, that's it for this video if you like the accent tell me down below and i'll see you in the next video peace out